Welcome back to Pro Tour Nagoya here at the Tournament Center. You know, it's the most exclusive league in the world. It's called the FFL, which is the future, future league. And you can't qualify for it. You can't just turn up on a Friday night and join. The Future Future League happens inside Wizards of the Coast in the research and development team. And I've been joined by Tom Lapelli, who is a player in the FFL. And yes, I guess, I Tom, that means that you are playing decks that are kind of a year ahead of time, more or less. Yeah, we, we live in the future. It's kind of surreal. We watch standard results. And it's like, oh, I remember that a year ago. Mm -hmm. hmm. OK. So. Um, in terms then of um, who is there? How many people are we talking about? Is this like an eight player league or a little bit bigger than that? We have about eight people who are core on it. When we get near the end of a cycle, we run, we call them tournaments. They're not exactly that rigorous, but mm -hmm. more people join when tournaments happen because we like playing games. So more people will come in and be like, oh, I want a deck, I want a deck, and we give them a deck. So Okay. I, I guess that Block Constructed, particularly in terms of Magic Online, people starting their collections there, they often begin with draft. And then Block Constructed can act as a bridge from there to standard over a kind of two-year cycle. Right. That's kind of how we see the role of Block Constructed. It's nice that we can run a pro tour like this here, but really the bigger purpose, and it's kind of awkward to say this here as I'm standing, is people are going to be playing for like $40,000 tomorrow. But for Magic Online, it's just enormous. There's so many events that fires. You can get in a Block Constructed tournament in like... 30 seconds at any hour of the day if you want. So, yeah. so it's a really big deal for us for that. All right, so let's go back to Pro Tour Nagoya Take One, which would have been in the summer of 2010 in Seattle. Let's find out what kind of decks you had around in the pit at that time. So our best decks were Tempered Steel, uh, Midrange, Red and Mono Red and Red Green decks, mm -hmm. but some of which played all eight of the Wellsprings and Phyrexia's core, some of which didn't. We had mono black infect decks and blue black Tezzeret decks. And those were those were the majority of what we had. We were fooling around with Birthing Pod and with Mono Blue Grand Architect decks, but we never got either of those to the places that we were we would have wanted them for playing in a tournament. Okay. The metagame is an incredibly complex beast, and I think one of the interesting things is that when you only have, let's say, 16 players, that metagame is very, very small, and it's going to be very odd. I mean, here in Nagoya, what we found is that everyone kind of knew that Tempered Steel was a tremendous deck, but then you had maybe 100 people leaving it in their backpack, refusing to play it, and going, I'm going to hate on Tempered Steel on Mono Red, because the, the field is incredibly diverse. But you can't really replicate that inside such a small environment. So I, I guess the metagame is all this overarching, almost beast that you have to try and tame but simultaneously give rein to. Sure. The way we approach that is we try not to put too much stock into any one person's personal preferences. We don't say like, oh, three people are playing red right now and that's so many people, ah, or whatever. Because maybe just people like playing red or we need to know something about a red card. What we try to do is figure out what the strong cards are and worry if they're, say, the five best cards are all blue or something, then we're like, okay, well, that's a problem. But we sure. try to identify what the best cards are. We're not always right about the best ways to combine those cards, but we're almost never surprised by what the best cards in the format are. All right, the people inside that room are rather good at magic. You've got multiple Pro Tour champions down the years. You've got Hall of Famer like Mike Turin, for example. There are a lot Dave of Humphreys Dave now. Humphreys is, is there as well. Um, is everyone trying to win? Is it what we would call a very spike environment? Or are you going out of your way to say, look, okay, I know that this Tempered Steel is a tier one deck. I'm going to fool around with Birthing Pod for the next couple of weeks kind of thing. For about the first half of a cycle, we're just trying to get all the cards played to make sure that they do fun and interesting things. But once we have settled most of that, we start really trying to win and gr grinding decks against each other for power level. Okay. This weekend, we've already had five rounds of Block Constructor. We've got five more today. What decks have interested you, excited you, surprised you? My favorite deck that I've seen so far was the Kenny Oberg-designed Grand Architect Birthing Pod deck. I spent a lot of time trying to get Grand Architect decks to work. I spent a lot of time trying to get Birthing Pod decks to work. But I never thought to smash the two together. And when I saw his deck in action, it was apparent to me that he had solved many problems that I was not able to solve myself. So it's like, and there's the answer. I've got one more question for you. Yeah. The Future Future League right now, in the summer of 2011, is busy 
with 2012. So Tom Lapelli, what are you playing in the FFL right now? My best deck from before I left for Japan two weeks ago was a red-green mid-range deck, mm -hmm. but I have no idea what they've done to my cards since I left the office. So Because a new set's in the, way, in the way. No, it's just it's some like... of the cards were really good, so they might be different. Okay, so. so there you have it, inside the Future Future League with Wizards R&D, Mr. Tom LaPelli. I'm your host, Rich Hagen, saying bye.